Hi everybody, welcome back to this week's video. It's Rich here, another fast and fun video. And in this week's video, I'm taking a look at my BMW Z3, the 2002 2.2 litre Z3 that is, I'm planning to put on the market to sell. Um, and really this is why, why have I decided to sell this Z3, having only owned it for six months. Um, and why am I selling it now? Um, and by the time you watch this, it will probably be Easter weekend. Um, and if it is, it'll probably be on the market. So why am I selling a two-seater Roadster Easter, which is absolutely the time you want to start using a two-seater Roadster? Well, the plan back in September, October time, when I first bought this, was it was always a itch I wanted to scratch. I'd always sort of over the last few years, I've been looking at the Z3s and thinking, well, th the design has really grown on me hugely. Love the way they looked. Um, and I thought that they're just incredible value for money. And there's a really good reason to buy in September, October, because nobody wants to buy a two-seater convertible in October. Um, and so price subdued, so it's a really good time to buy. And I wanted it to use as a bit of a winter hack through the worst of the six winter months so when it's coldest darkest wettest months and see really test the z3 to see what it's like to own this 20 year old roadster um, and one of the reasons was to keep my more fragile 30 year old mark 1 mx5 off the road and see what this z3 german engineered rear wheel drive roadster was like during the worst of the uk's and the british's winter months um, and then the advantage is when you come to look at selling a roadster um, Easter is a fantastic time to sell because everybody wants a two-seater convertible for the six summer months so and that makes it pretty good from a from a, um, a, a probably a buy in the autumn and a sell in the spring and to tell you the truth there's something maybe I'm just different but there's something quite nice about having those crisp cold winter mornings when the sun's out and it's close to freezing and you have the roof down and you've got the heaters on max and you go for a drive and there's something it just it, you feel alive um, on those on those drives so for me roadsters should be driven 12 months of the year here's the owner that keeps my mark one z3 off the road during during the worst of the winter but yeah, and, and the Z3 has, 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 has done a brilliant job over those six months. Um, and and there's, there's a few, I think, really good reasons why I'm letting the Z3 go. And it's not just a typical YouTuber because I need to keep changing cars, keep content fresh. Um, because I don't see myself as a YouTuber, really, because I've got so few subscribers and views and things like that. And I'm just a guy that just does videos on a weekly basis, just because I enjoy doing them and there's a few of you that <laughs> enjoy watching them or oh, I hope you do anyway um, so it's not really for refresh content because actually at the moment I've not got a plan for what I'm going to replace it with because at the moment I truly do not know yet um, and it's one of those strange situations where I so often have plans about what I want in my garage in the, the sort of the six car garage and um uh, and when I bought the Z3, I had a plan. I'm only going to have it for six months, then I'm going to sell it. And strangely, for one of these rare occasions, what I planned is actually going to happen. Um, and with a bit of luck, because the market will be stronger now, um, I might make a few hundred pounds on this. And that will cover the few costs, and it has been a few minor costs associated with it, because the only couple of faults I've had with the car in the six months over the winter was... We had some steering wheel judder under braking, um, which I thought was pads and discs. So I went to replace the pads and discs myself. And again, they're so cheap. Pads and discs were less than 100 quid. So really, really cheap. Um, and it's literally, it's an hour, maybe two max for any own mechanic to do. Really simple job. The only problem is one of my calipers. And, and I, when I did the change, the pads and discs looked good. Um, and the, the reason was it's because one of the, the, the piston in one of the calipers had seized. It's a common failure. I've had the same on the Mark 1 MX-5. When cars get to this sort of age, 20 years in, it's not uncommon for pistons to seize in the caliper. So I had to get a refurbed caliper from Euro Car Parts. I think it was about 70 quid, I think. 
So with the pads and discs and the C's caliper being replaced during the winter, and then the only other thing was a headlight bulb. Um, and so it's cost me less than £200 to run for the six months. This car came with full service history, so it's got, it's had really, really good history behind it. And other than that, it's been an absolute flipping star of a car. Um, and, and if I can sell it for a few hundred pound more than I bought it for, and my logic here says, because I bought it when it was subdued, it's now should be starting to thrive as the warm weather comes and actually Easter weekend looks like it's going to be a good weekend. So we'll get some, get, get, the, get the roof down, get some good photos done and hopefully I'll sell it for a few hundred pound more than I paid for it six months ago. And if I can do that, that'll offset. Um, 5,000 miles I've done in this car plus a couple hundred pound on maintenance and I just get free, free driving for, for, for six months. Um, and that's the benefit when you take a punt on these older modern classic sports cars right so what's the other reasons because there's a few there's a few it's not been the perfect car it's far from it there's no such thing as a perfect car so i just want to take you through a few of the niggles some of the things that have that haven't gone as well i've not just just been a bit of a pain in the ass really with regard to the z3 and most of them are actually inside the car so let me uh, let me take you into the car So, what is it that I specifically annoys me and I don't get on with the car? Well, the first one is my size. And for a Z3 that is, it feels bigger inside than my Mark 1 MX-5. And, but there's a few really annoying features. I think headroom is my, and I'm, so I'm just a shade over six foot. So this is my driving position. The seat's in the lowest position possible. It's as far back as it will go. In fact, it's slightly touching the back, actually. Um, my head is just touching the fabric. Now, that's probably comparable to my Mark 1 MX-5. Um, but where my Mark 1 MX-5 feels a little bit smaller, narrower, and the steering wheel's smaller, the, the Z3 steering wheel is actually large. I think it's, I think it's an inch or two too, too large. And what, what, what difficulty now you have is that and they've probably done that because there's no height adjustment in the steering wheel. And so in my driving position, don't forget, lowest setting possible, I can't see the top of the dials. So I have to literally bend down to that position, crouch down to see the top of the dials. You might say, well, you don't need to see. Well, actually, I do because the sort of three, four thousand, three to five thousand revs, is partially obscured and most importantly on the speedo anything from sort of 50 and above 50 i can't see i'm going like this that's my sort of standard driver's view and you can see how frustrating that is but if i just drop down an inch that's all it would take and then i'll be able to see all the dials um the second annoying feature is the seat so the seats are this sort of leather or imitation leather or maybe leather i'm not really sure um and they look great um and they're they've worn really well this is a hundred twelve thousand mile car they've worn really well there's very little creasing there's no rips and tears so they've been well cared for well looked after but they are incredibly incredibly slippy and they're slippy with regard to having little lumbar support on the sides either i find that when i start cornering hard I'm slipping and I'm sl and the whole body is moving in the car and it's just not what you want in a in a roadster. Now, in my other cars, whether it's the Megane, even the Clio, the STI, the MX-5, the MX-5, because it's narrower, you're sort of pinned in. Here, I, as soon as I start pushing on through the corners, my body is actually moving. Now, I know you can get sports seats. These are not sports seats. I, I, but I think it's just because they're so highly polished and shiny in the leather. Leather doesn't necessarily, for me, suit sports cars. Um, so if you're pushing on, I just find I can't see the top of the dials. I'm slipping around and it, you just lose confidence. And the final, I think, negative, main negative with a car is the steering itself. Now, I'd read a few reviews before... Um, 
I bought the Z3 and with the concoction of the E36 and the E30 front and rear back end etc and it was a little bit disconnected and, and I, I thought that's oh do you know what underline that that was years ago I want to take the Z3 as it is today what does it feel like and drive like it's it does feel I think you drive this car at seven tenths it's a great roadster but when I want to push on and push to eight nine or even ten tenths and have a bit of fun in the car um I just lose confidence I have no idea what's going on. The steering's just a little bit too light. It's incredibly um, sensitive as well. So it, it's just that off-centre. Um, as soon as you're loaded up in a corner, it's fine. But it's just that off-centre. It just feels a little bit too twitchy. So unsettlingly twitchy. Not, not in a fun way, but in a... I'm lacking confidence here with the steering. Um, oh, it's just started to pour down outside. This is typical... April weather here in the UK so and because of our really poorly surface roads that doesn't help it does tram line when you get in sort of some of the main trunk roads where you've got the big trucks have gone down and, and made ripples in the road and, and and it catches cambers and it's really sensitive and you've you've got to concentrate um, so and potholes unsettle it so um, drive it at seven tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, roof down, heaters on, um, certainly on smoother roads it feels much more settled, but I live in rural setting, bumpy, camber, pot old roads, and, it, and you start pushing on and it just gets all out of kilter. I've just jumped out the car, it's just eased and it's spitting, but there's still dark clouds all around us, typical April here in the UK. Um, because I just wanted to just point out a few things, I think, with regard to what I do, what I have loved and learnt to love with, with the car. I think I start with the looks. It is a really, really good looking car. Um, I think it's aged brilliantly, considering this design is 25 years old. Um, and I just think the car has just got better and better throughout the years. Um, that clamshell bonnet and these these sort of side vents, mine are in chrome, and I know there's a there's different views whether they sh whether it's better in chrome or in in, in the paint colour. But I love those chrome side vents. I just think it really does stand out well, um, and mine rides on these split rim alloys as well. Just it just it looks it looks fantastic. Um, the silver with black leather interior again I think it's a really really nice looking car and I will definitely miss it from the looks and, and these rear haunches not easy to see from from this angle but the the, 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 the later generation Z3s where they were just widened slightly and the sort of the big shoulders at the back and it just when you look from the back it just looks really really menacing so the looks for me are a really, really big killer for, for, for letting this, this car go. I think other features is the engine. I, I went for that mid-range 2.2 um, litre. Um, I wanted everyday practicality. I wanted some sort of MPG. Um, I wanted some sort of performance. I just think that 2.2 that, that sits right in that sweet spot. And I still do today. If I bought another one as a sort of a daily driver, I'd still plump for the 2.2. For me, it is that sweet spot. Um, the engine is just so linear. It just pulls like, like other engines don't. Certainly when I jump out some of the sort of the turbocharged cars like my Megane or my Impreza, um, which is sort of on boost or off boost, this just pulls right from low. You can hear it building and it's just such an addictive way of, of pulling power down through and onto the road. And then the third thing, although I've not the seats for being a bit slippy, steering wheel been a little bit big and the lack of cup holders, there's no getting away from the fact that in that car, people would look at the interior there and go, this car's done 40, 50,000 miles. It is astonishing that this car has done 112,000 miles. The interior, the build quality, the way it's put together. There's no squeaks, there's no rattles. The seats are in brilliant condition. Um, the, the, the dash, the layout, it's functional, it's screwed together. It just defies that this car is 20 years old. That build quality oozes, especially on the inside. 
and for me that that just shines of german design and german manufacturing at its very very best um so there we go um for once i had a plan that i've kept to well i'm perhaps kept to i've still got to sell the car yet um yeah as always it's always a bit disappointing when you when you say goodbye to a car but as you say goodbye to one another one will come in to replace it and the adventure and the excitement and the thrill and sometimes the pain and the disappointment all comes around but that's all part of owning this these multi old-fashioned 20 year old sports cars you never know quite sure what you're going to get and that's a bit of a pun I suppose from Forrest Gump um, there you go I hope you enjoyed it say farewell to the Z3 Let's welcome the new car, um, and there'll be another video on that, about what that car will be. And at the moment, I genuinely do not know what I'm going to replace it with. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe, probably here somewhere. Give me a thumbs up. Make any comments. Always read every single one of them. And stay tuned. Another video coming up next week. Thanks for watching.